Zenergy, the interactive podcast pro- providing resources for building a better life. I am Zen Ashe. I am your conduit, your coach, and your catalyst to that better life. Uh, a coach draws out hidden potential. A conduit provides a connection and a catalyst sparks change. So today I'm going to be talking with Siraj Rakim. So hey, say hi to the people. how y'all doing, everybody? And he is an amazing poet. He's a rapper. Uh, he's a director. He's working on a film called For the Love of Poetry. He is an actor, and he can tell us about some of the things that he's acted in. So he has multi talents. And he also is someone like me who is on this journey trying to improve our lives through what I call synergy, but we're going to call it tonight the law of attraction. Yeah. Trying to attract what we want into our lives right. and to. Regardless of where we come from, regardless of our past, regardless of what society would have set out for us and have planned for us, for us to divine our own destiny and for us to decide where we're going. And so I wanted to start off tonight with uh, a little bit of background on myself. You know, I tell you a little bit about myself in every episode, but you're going (laughs) to learn a lot about me today. I'm going to be just real transparent. Yeah. Because sometimes people have an attitude of, you know, oh, they just talk. They don't live this stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, that is not the case with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know it's not the case with Siraj not at all. either. Not at all. Um, and so I'm going to talk to you about what I have lived, and I'm going to talk to you about why I have lived this way and, and where I probably would have been had I not taken in some of the teachings that I have been exposed to. So going back to before I was born, Okay. (laughs) My mother, she was going to Spelman and she was engaged to this guy and he graduated and he said, I don't really need a black woman. I need a white woman. A white woman can do more for me than Mm. a black woman. And my mother was heartbroken. She had her whole life planned out with this dude. She left Spelman. She's like, there's too many memories here. I'm going to go back to Southern. And she met my father there. And my father was actually supposed to be a rebound. He was not supposed to be (laughs) the one because the one got away. (laughs) So about eight weeks after my mom came back home, she ended up pregnant. Mm. And my dad was like, now he knew the whole story, you know, all this stuff. That's kind of, you know, that's uh, the timing. So he actually was going to break up with her. And he took her home, and he was dropping her off, and he watched my mom walk into the house because he was a gentleman. He watched her walk into the house, watched her walk up to the steps, and she had just told him that she was pregnant. She had told a couple other people, well, when my my grandfather, my mother's father, opened that door, he started beating my mother with his fist because she was pregnant. She wasn't married. Mm -hmm. And my father saw that. He walked up the steps. He took my mother into his car. He said, we're going to the courthouse to get married. Just in case that's my child, I'm not leaving you in a situation like this. That is how my parents' marriage started. Okay. So I grew up in a household where there was tension, where my father kind of felt trapped by my mother, and my mother felt like this was not the life she signed up for. And that could have led to me having a lot of insecurity issues because every now and then my dad would be like, I don't even know if you're mine. I don't know why you expect me to do all this stuff for you. You know, even though he was a great man and I, I'm, I'm so grateful for so many things he did. That was one thing that he did that was a little <laughs> painful. Mm-hmm. So being a kid who feels unwanted, I could have gotten into all kind of trouble. Add to that the fact that before I was 12, I had been raped and molested by a family member. That could have led to me being a single mother. That could have led to me having all kinds of problems. It did lead to a few issues. And somebody in my family knew, and they told me to be quiet about it. That's what happens in a lot of black families, you know. So I was one of those, you know, 60% of black women that gets molested or raped before they're 18. And I had low self-esteem. The person who molested me, who raped me, told me this happens to all pretty little black girls. So I didn't want to be a pretty little back, black girl. I was very tomboyish. I didn't wear makeup the whole time that I went to school. I didn't really want to wear dresses. I didn't, I didn't want to be anything feminine, You're, you know, because I just I associated femininity with vulnerability in a bad way. And that could have led to all kind of problems. But 
I did have some good role models that came in my life and said, hey, here's some books. Read these books. You know, here's people who overcame. Read about Maya Angelou. She was raped. She was molested. Look at all the things she's done. And so rather than see myself as a victim, I saw myself as a person that could overcome. Mm -hmm. And I saw myself as a person who could change what had happened to me in terms of I didn't have to let it define me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I still had some issues because being raised with some abuse in my past, I did end up getting married to an abusive man twice. One was physically violent. The other one was kind of emotionally abusive. Um, I had to get away from both of those things. So I have been on a journey ever since I was a teenager, when I was a little suicidal, when I felt unwanted, overweight, unattractive, scared to be attractive. I had all these issues. Didn't go to counseling until I was in my 20s. She probably needed a lot sooner. But the law of attraction and, and being told that, hey, you know, you have control over your attitude. You have control over what you're putting out in the universe. And if you sow the right seeds, you're going to get a great result. That gave me a lot of power because I grew up feeling helpless. I grew up feeling like a victim, but when I learned about the law of attraction, I also learned about just all the laws of the universe. Um, that, and at the time I was a Christian, you know, that along with the Bible, along with going to church, it kind of made me feel like I could take control and I could step outside of this role that society had put me in as, you know, a victim of incest, a victim of abuse, you know, a, a, a kid who was in a, a broken family, da, 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 all this stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? All of these labels that people put on you. Um, I didn't have to be, I didn't have to be any of those labels. Mm -hmm. I could actually begin to say I am and put something positive behind that. Mm -hmm. I am victorious. I am successful. I am favored by God. I am anointed. I am talented. And I began to say that about myself. And then I began to see myself differently. I began to write it down. I began to post it around my house. You know, all of these words, because I, I really believe in the power of words, you know, putting up things that remind you of who you are. So I wanted to share that with you, you know, because I'm getting ready to do this goal setting workshop on the second um, and it's going beyond the vision board. And when I'm talking about putting together a, a, a goal setting toolbox, I'm not talking about theory. I'm talking about this is what I did so that I didn't end up a statistic. This is what I did. You know, when I decided I wanted to go to college and got there on a full scholarship, you know, when I decided I wanted to leave my marriage and I was not going to be one of those women under the poverty line, you know, on, on welfare, barely making ends meet. When I decided I wanted to start a business, not just one, I have three businesses. All right. When I became a teacher and I said, I don't want to just be the average teacher. I have been nominated for teacher of the year six times. I've won twice. I've been runner up three times. I have two national awards for teaching, one from the Nobel Foundation, one from the University of Chicago. I have a congressional award for activism. So, you know, I'm not saying all of this to toot my own horn in a sense. I'm saying this because I'm grateful. Yeah. There were people that came into my life and they spoke life into me. They planted seeds in me. They put books in front of me. They put, you know, role models in front of me. They said, you know, look at Ruby D. You know, look at Diane Carroll. Look at these women. You know, look at Cicely Tyson. That's what they put in front of me. And I said, you know what? If Eartha Kitt can do this, Eartha Kitt was molested and raped. Okay. If she could become a icon and overcome segregation, then who am I? I got many more advantages than she did. Who am I not to do that? So when I talk about putting together this goal setting toolbox, I'm talking about pulling those ancestors in that really can motivate you, pulling those books and pulling those songs and those movies and getting together as a group to kind of brainstorm what we can do so that we can move beyond, you know, where we are mm -hmm. and move to something bigger and greater and deeper. And so I wanted to give you a little bit of my background because I could have been something different than what I am, something much less than what I am. I could have been um, a failure. I could have been a victim. I could have been a drug addict. I could have, I could have killed myself when I tried to, but I did not 
have any of those things happen because of the things that happened to me that were stepping stones for me to attract into my life better things. And so, you know, I wanted to kind of come to Siraj because I've been talking for a while, but I invited mm-hmm. him on here because I know just like I believe in this really strongly and I know that it works. I know that what you think, what you put into your heart, what you speak out of your mouth it can totally transform your life. I know that this man mm-hmm. knows it too. I know mm-hmm. he does. So what do you want to tell us? Like, what is your, how did you first get introduced to like the law of attraction and all of that? Like, how did you start? Why did you start? I, I actually, I say I stumbled upon it. Mm. Like, okay. So like in, in 95, 94, 95, I was going through a rough time around this time. I wasn't working. I had got laid off. Um, I had a daughter at that time. She was like one years old, and me and her mother had split up, and I wasn't trying to have that. Like, I, me and my mom, my dad had got a divorce when I was young. So in my mind from that, when I was, since a kid, it was my, I always had a plan for me to have my kids have a mother and a father. So when me and uh, her mother broke up, that was, that, that was rough for me, you know what I'm saying? So... I was going through a rough time, so but I was writing at the time. I was writing a lot of rhymes, but I was writing about what I was going through, the rough times and what I would do because of what I'm going through. And a month later, I'm going through my raps, and everything I wrote down had came to pass, everything. And But when I saw that, it's like a bell went off in my mind. I'm like, I was like, it was like, ha-ha. It's like, it's like, so what I began to do, I began to write about what I wanted to happen. Rather than me writing about what's going on, I started writing about, things that I wanted to happen. And ever since then, I've been doing that, you know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it was like, I feel like I stumbled upon it. And so, like, for me, I saw the effects of the laws of attraction. I saw the effects of it. So, but then I began to study it. I began to read books about it. So, I like, I come from a background. My pops was in the Nation of Islam. Mm-hmm. So uh, the first book I ever read was The Message to the Black Man. Mm-hmm. And what that book did for me, it... See, first of all, when I was a kid, I always been always was aware of a higher power, something greater than us that was in, <laughs> in control of everything. I've always felt it. I always knew about it. I, I wasn't taught this. I just always knew it. I always felt it. I can remember getting my diaper changed, and I've always had a divine presence with me and communicating with me in some kind of way. Like, you know, I, I heard about, they say Jesus spoke in the crib. And when I heard that about that, it brought me back to, I can remember getting my diaper changed. And I've, I've always had a conversation going on in my, in my mind. So I couldn't talk at the time, but I've always had a, a conversation going on in my head. And I've, I've always operated from the mental space in, in, in my heart space. Always, always have. So once I began to read about the laws, of, first of all, when I first found out about it, I thought I was the first one that knew, that knew, knew about this. I thought I was like, it was something new. <laughs> but as I began to study it, it's this thing been around since the beginning of time. Yeah. So I'm thinking I was up. I, I find out I, I cracked the code. Like I'm the new, only one know about this thing. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> but that's so. And YouTube wasn't it wasn't out at the time. Like '96, it wasn't it wasn't popping like that. So once I began to get on YouTube, and I use YouTube to study. I I, I study um all about this on YouTube. I, I watch a lot of videos about a lot of laws of attraction. So once I started studying this thing, for me it's like I always was using it. And then for me to hear about people talk about it, to me, it's just like a, was that confirmation. Like, it's, it's, it's real. I, I ain't, it's, this ain't nothing new I found out about. This has this been going on. It's this ancient knowledge. You feel me? Yeah, you're it's, right. It's ancient, it's ancient wisdom. So it's like, and when I read The Message of the Black Man, what that book did for me, it confirmed for me. Because I, I always felt like I was a, 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 like a great. I always felt greatness within me. Even though I was, I was, I'm, I'm, I'm from um, New Orleans and I'm in a, the, the ghetto type area, and I don't see I don't see I don't see greatness around me, but I always felt that I was great and there was greatness within me. So when I read that book, it confirmed for me why I feel like this because we we I find out we, we we come from greatness. You feel me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and like so like in school, all we know about is slavery. They don't they don't take us back to before that. So I didn't. I always felt like I was a king, and I always felt like I was somebody great. So when I read that book, it confirmed and let me know that, that this is why I feel like this because I am that. You feel me? <laughs> so I've been. Man, ever since then, I've been, I, I write what I want to happen, and these things happen. I think about it, and it happens, you know? Well, you know, one thing I tell my students is um, thoughts become things. Mm-hmm. Because everything that we see, this table 
somebody thought the idea first. Yeah, they <laughs> thought it up first. They thought I want to make it nine feet long. I want to have this circumference. I want the base to be like this. I want it to be a dark cherry wood. You know, somebody at some time decided, I think the sound moves in waves. And the first time they told somebody that they, the person thought you're crazy. What are you mm-hmm. talking about? Sound moving in waves. What are you talking about? I think I could capture it in a microphone. Mm. And I think I could transmit it and capture it in in a phonograph. I think mm-hmm. I could capture it, you know, in, in different medium. And they were looking at him like. I'm Shay, and I have a weekly podcast called Zenergy which is fuel for the mind, body, and soul. And this is the Zenergize Your Life Goal Setting Package, Volume 1. It comes with a workbook, a journal, stickers, a bookmark, tabs, and a QR code where you can find my podcast. And inside this workbook, you're going to have 16 different principles. The first one I'm going to show you mine is abundance. You have a place to put pictures that inspire you of role models, also pictures of goals that you want to create, goals, journal prompts, meditations, affirmations, all kinds of things to help you focus on this principle to better your life. And like I said, there's 16 principles. So this is a $15 package that comes with all of these things I've shown you, $21 with shipping and handling, and you can get it at laughsandlyrics.com. So Zenergize Your Life with me. Thank you.